Hey guys, it's Sunday, March 27th. I'm going to be doing a little bit of painting today, but in my sketchbook. And you'll probably see some store stuff as well, like packaging orders. So I always have that to do. But I've been itching to try doing oil painting in my sketchbook because every time I, I paint in oil, it's always like this, not big, I was going to say big painting. They're not physically that large, but I'm doing a painting on an, a wooden board and it's this whole process where I'm planning it out by doing a digital drawing in, in advance and then I project it onto the wood and it's this whole big process for each oil painting and I want more casual oil painting where I can just kind of do a little bit in my sketchbook, just play around. So that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to start off by gessoing a couple pages just to have a base for the oil paint to go on to. <laughs> I don't want to do an acrylic undercoat, I don't think. At least I'll try initially not doing that because it's, it's an easy way to get to a second layer quickly since acrylic dries quickly, but I kind of want to just, you know, maybe sketch something in pencil and then go right on top with oil. Just, just play around. I don't know. I've never done oil in a sketchbook before. Let's just play around, see how it goes. So I've got a bit of a mess on my desk right now because I was going to paint my nails last night. I did prep the nails and then supper was ready. So we went downstairs and ate that while watching Shark Tank, but I fell asleep while watching Shark Tank. <laughs> and then I got up to come finish my nails, but I was so tired, so groggy. I was like, there's no way I can do like precise nail work right now. <laughs> So while the gesso dries, I'm gonna paint my nails. I also want to tidy up the warehouse a little bit, so I'll do that first. I'll tidy the warehouse, then paint my nails, which shouldn't take too long since they're already prepped. I don't think I'm gonna do a spread because I'm scared the pages will like stick together long term. So I'm gonna do just one side, but I'm gonna do a page in each book. I don't know if I'll get to both pages, but just to give myself some options, I'm gonna go in with this foam brush just to see if I can get a smoother look. You can sand gesso, like, do a couple layers, sand it. Oh God, I'm scared of putting it directly on the page like this. But it's nice to not have to dirty a container, you know? Okay, this is actually still looks streaky, just like a regular brush. So never mind. Typically I do a couple coats if it's on wood, so I'm curious if I want to do a couple in the sketchbook or not really. Part of me was slightly bothered that I had two sketchbooks going at a time instead of just like finishing one then going on to the next, but there's the two paper types so it's like, you know, it depends. That's what I'm doing, but another perk will be if I'm waiting for some paint to dry, I can work in the other book. I probably won't typically have two books going at once like this. I mean, maybe sometimes, but... Sometimes at Superstore, when you're checking out, they will offer you the deal of the week. And I never get the deal of the week, but this time I did. Well, first she holds it up and I was like, what is that? <laughs> they are cotton swabs. And I, I you know, I always need more Q-tips, so... Um, I said yes, but also I thought this would be great for just keeping with my painting supplies because I always need Q-tips and I'll bring up like a few at a time from the basement, but like now I just, you know, this will be the painting cotton swabs. I can keep it on my little painting trolley. So here's an overview of the room. <laughs> it's a bit messy. Um, yep, this is what I'm gonna tidy. <laughs> And while I tidy up, I'm going to let you know about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Whether you're interested in leveling up your creative skills for fun or for your career, Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers, entrepreneurs, and hobbyists because they have thousands of classes on all kinds of creative subjects. My favorite video categories are illustration, oil and acrylic painting, and small business tips. Sometimes I'm looking to learn a specific skill and sometimes I'm just looking to be inspired. All videos are ad-free so you can stay focused on exploring new skills and new premium classes are launched each week so you'll always have something new to discover. Also, their entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. I recently watched the class Ink Drawing Techniques Brush, Nib, and Pen Style by Yuko Shimizu. While I did love learning about her inking techniques, my favorite part was when she brought us along to the art store and showed various art supplies you could use. 
The class is not only informative, but also fun. If you'd like to go on your own creative journey, the first 1,000 people to use my link in the video description will get a free one month trial of Skillshare where you'll have unloaded access to their entire selection of classes. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, it's looking a lot better in here. Woohoo, oh, <gasps> straight crank, straight crank. Give me a, <sighs> yeah. It's the overview. Do, 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 do. Okay, I've got a second coat of gesso on the sketchbooks, and while that dries, I'm gonna paint my nails. I think I'll go back to this one. It's a nice light peachy color. It's the most treacherous coat. Sort of sets the baseline for all the rest. I love this color. It's probably my favorite of all the colors I have. Uh. Okay, the gesso seems dry. Here's how the paper's holding up, by the way. It's curling. But I'm surprised, actually, how well it's held up, considering it was soaked in gesso. It'll flatten, too, as time goes on. Like, uh, I have a couple watercolor illustrations in these sketchbooks, and they flattened over time, too, although you can still see some ripple. But yeah, just thought I'd show that. And then let's look at the cream one. <laughs> Debating whether or not to sand. I don't think I will. It's got this crisscrossy texture to it. I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> Just brush strokes going one way and then going the other way. <sighs> got myself some Triscuits. I used to not be a big fan of Triscuits, but then I tried the cracked pepper, black pepper or cracked black pepper and olive oil. And oh my god. <laughs> now I like Triscuits. This flavor is so good. Huh. Mm. Oh, look what I did to one of my pens. It was a Bic pen. It's a black pen with a clear outer case. And I was like, this looks boring. So I covered it in washi tape. <laughs> I just started at the base because that's where the, the edge overlaps because the washi tape doesn't like to stick to itself very well. So I just started at this end and just wrapped it around till I got to the end and I put a little bit of glue on the end. Like just use a glue stick to glue down the flap. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> now something I'll be using today is Galkid. It's an oil painting medium and it makes stuff dry faster. I normally paint solvent free because I just want it to be as non-toxic as possible. I'll only use safflower oil. Oh, this stuff right here. I do have Gamsol, but I only use that for the final stage of brush cleaning. I don't use it while I paint. So as you can see on this, it says danger, poison. On the back it says Galkid thins oil colors, increases transparency and gloss and speeds drying. So I'm interested in the drying part, but also the thinning part. Cause that's what I use the safflower oil for is for thinning the paint while I'm painting. Now I thought I would transfer some of this into a smaller bottle, which is this little dropper bottle. This was formerly niacinamide, which I use for my face. This is from The Ordinary, and I just peeled the label off and cleaned it out, and I got myself a little glass dropper bottle. So I grabbed myself a little funnel from the kitchen so I could funnel some gal kit into there. So some of that could be dropper directly onto some paint on my palette, or I could dropper some into one of these little palettes, just cause these have little tiny wells. It would be perfect for something like this when I only want a small quantity at once. Trisket. Oh, gore. There's no tab on this. I either have to destroy my freshly painted nails. Okay, it's not going to destroy it, but sometimes I do go in with my mouth, but I don't want to do that right now. Not with something that's labeled as being poison. Clean off the tip of that. Okay, we need to leave room for the actual dropper to be in there. So that's really good. Oh god, it's dripping down. Oh god, it's on the desk, but it's dripping down the bottle. This paper towel is gonna go into my trash jar. Yuck. Oh, that's 
stinks. I mean, it could be worse. It smells very like waxy. Woo. And I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay, it's safe now to grab another Triscuit. There's a kiki hair in there. Okay, I'm gonna start with the white one, so goodbye. Gonna need the trolley, which is, whoa, tipping over. I was gonna say, which is looking kinda messy right now. <laughs> My Q-tips that I just threw on top. Um, okay, yeah, we need to get organized here. <laughs> the doll display is kinda blinding you. Display lights off. Does that help? Yeah, 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 it does. Let's just re-roll this. It's a little loose. What is that paintbrush doing? Okay. That's gonna have to go out the top. Now this is mainly for oil painting stuff, not acrylic. Although I do see some stuff like a Stay Wet palette. So that doesn't have to be here, but it kind of makes sense to be there. I don't know. I don't have a good other spot for it at the moment. Oh, and a sponge in it. This is the palette paper. <laughs> I suppose I do do acrylic base coats a lot. So maybe it does make sense to have it in here. I'm just gonna take this off for a sec. I've got all the jars in the bottom. A lot of these are empty that I'm just hoarding to use as future rag jars. Because oil soaked rags can spontaneously combust. So I put them in here, I add a bit of water. Looks like I probably could add a little bit more. Just enough to dampen them a little bit, plus this just cuts off oxygen supply. So, yep, got a pickled egg jar. Another mason jar. This was Ernest ice cream. I thought that was a nice little short jar. Maybe not for rags, but something else. The Rayo sauce. <laughs> Wait, where's the lid? Oh, it was probably still wet when I put it in here, which is probably why the lid's off. There are a couple lids here. Another pickle jar lid, but where's the jar? This one has Gamsol in it for brush cleaning and it's got a coil so you can rub the brush against the metal coil to get some friction in there. Satin UV varnish. What is this? Wait, is this Gambar? Well, it's discolored, whatever it is. It's thin like Gamvar or Gamsol. Probably Gamsol, but you know, maybe I have to get rid of that because <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh yeah, the Galkid and the Gamsol, the big jar of Gamsol. Okay, we'll put the uh, empty ones at the back. There's really not much for organization for this bottom one because there wasn't a lot there to begin with. Oh, but maybe I could put the Q-tips down there. It's cylindrical like everything else. And now for row number two, more tape. <laughs> I have this hanging here still. Okay. A couple palettes, both dirty. They have acrylic in them. I ain't cleaning that right now, I'll tell you that much. Oh, hey, there's a bunch of brushes in here. Whoa! Um, this is crusty. So is this one. Wait, what? This one's okay. What is on this one? It's got glitter. Oh, no. This one's also crusty. Did those? What? I'm, I'm confused. I think I got these ones at the dollar store or something. Just some nice flathead brushes because those tend to be my fave for oil painting. Some kind of mystery liquid that has sort of solidified or jellified. <laughs> okay. This was a set of paints, if I recall correctly, like they came stored in here. So it was like, you get your supplies and you get a wood board that you can paint on. But I have yet to paint on this. Probably should go with my other boards and stuff, which are all in that closet. And then we've got this. Originally there was something glued down inside this box. This was from a 3D pen. So that's why it's got that goop at the bottom. <laughs> But it's good for organizing stuff. I'm gonna move to the top and just see what I got here. Okay. Palette I normally would store in the middle, so I got lazy, I guess, and threw it on top. This is a pretty big safflower oil jar, so this could probably go down here. Because this is the one I actively use, which is... It's pretty dirty. 
Got a couple more. I'll put those on the bottom too. Oh gosh, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Be nice to clean these out. <laughs> put them with the pallets. It's acrylic, but these don't keep it wet forever. So the stuff in there's probably dried out. Okay, probably had varnish in there. Another little container. <laughs> That's reusable, so I'll hang on to that. A little crusty piece of paper. That probably should have been in the jar. Gambar. Put that down here. <clears throat> now, usually this is down in this box. As is this. It's my big titanium white. Oh, wait, this is the golden one. Wait. I have a big oil painting one too. Oh, there it is. Aha! This is the one I was thinking of, but I mean, they could both go down there. Two big boys. That actually might even fit next to these, which would make more sense. Although also it makes sense for this to not be on this ledge. So this would fit nicely there. I can see I have some brushes that were previously washed that I laid out to dry on a cloth and therefore they're just laying here. Now where's that dangling brush? <laughs> This was also a dropper bottle. I don't know where the dropper piece is. These are not in any particular order, so we'll just throw those on there. Master soap. Palette knives. Can go there. Yeah, that can go here. I grab this little box, which was originally for my cell phone. gonna put it in here. I've got the pallets back there. This box can be for all the little containers like this. And then these can go in there once I deal with them. This is the deal with it pile. <laughs> I might actually want to soak these brushes. Yeah, get them soaking in some Gamsol. Wait, that's what that is! That is for sure Gamsol! I remember now! One time I put a bunch of brushes in there and then I just kind of like forgot about them for over a month. The brushes were fine, but like it took me forever to wash them, but that was the jar. So yeah, we'll let those soak. They can go down here, squeeze. It's actually getting tight now that I've added a bunch of stuff. Maybe the Q-tip should be in the middle. Oh yeah, oh. That's pretty nice. And there, that's back on. I unpacked those new brushes and just laid them here because maybe I'll use them today. Okay, stop. And then this little gal kid would just probably be up here with all this stuff. This is again one that could probably go underneath. It's not something I actively use while painting, you know. It's just for cleaning up. Okay. Looking good. I'm gonna want this. so beautiful except for that big oily blotch right there but <laughs> so pretty that was from the picture pour artwork and some final fixes on floral friend this is canson palette paper by the way um yeah okay Hmm, what am I painting? Definitely something in my comfort zone, just since this is sort of a playing around session. Kind of like when you're trying a new medium, draw something you're familiar with so it takes that difficulty aspect out of it. I do really need to practice flowers in oil because the process is so much different than when I'm illustrating with marker and pencil. And when I did Floral Friend, I really struggled with the flowers. I also would love to do a face that has lots of colors. I could do both, but I feel like I'm running out of time now. Might have some time tomorrow. Even though tomorrow I was gonna do the witchy planner pad and notepad and order prints. Which maybe I will have time for it all. I don't know. I 
had to erase that. I was just not feeling it. But oh my god, this is a Prismacolor Call Erase. Normally they erase to a certain extent, but not that well. On this gesso, it's almost completely erased. Like you can see a ghosting of the image. I probably could even go in even more and erase better. I just did a quick erasing and you can barely see it. It would not erase that cleanly on just plain paper. But yeah, I was thinking of this huge, stupid, closed mouth grin and then I've just changed my mind. Okay, after another failed attempt at creating a sketch, I've decided to just go with a stock photo. Take the imaginative portion of the sketching out of it. I used to have an Adobe stock subscription and I saved a bunch of photos back then. And so I was looking through that folder to see what I could find. And I'm gonna go with this. So, uh, I've had a couple more attempts that I've erased. <laughs> I just wanted to look up a nice basic face that I can base my illustration off of. Although mine's not gonna be photorealistic or anything, it's gonna be more stylized, but I, I brought up this face from my Adobe stock folder. Her head was actually tilted more. I photoshopped it to be more straight on. Cause I'm trying to keep this simple. <laughs> So let's try this yet again. I'm spending way more time than I thought I would on the sketch, but it's just one of those days. Okay, so obviously it's not the same. The biggest thing I changed was her mouth because I Decided I didn't want the big toothy grin. I wanted more of a subdued smile. So that's what I went with and then tried to just stylize it a little more. And I'm gonna call that good enough and just start on the painting because I'm getting antsy and I just wanna paint. Okay, I got my apron on. I put down some colors here just to get started. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of this gal kid. I'm scared to drop it directly on the paint because they're such small amounts. Oop, that is not the spot I was aiming for, but a teeny little blob of it. All right, let's go. Just kidding, we're not doing that music again. <laughs> Gonna go in with some voice over here, woohoo! Although I'm not sure what all to talk about. I'm painting with my oil paints, but in my sketchbook, it really was not that much different at all than painting on wood. It was more just like how far I'm taking it compared to when I work on wood, because I do a lot of thinner layers and let stuff dry in between when I'm doing a bigger painting. But with these, I was trying to do the entire thing in one day, all technically in one layer. I mean, I am going over with paint on top of paint I've already put down. So in that sense, yes, there are multiple layers, but I mean, one technical layer where I do not allow it to dry in between. So I have to think a little bit harder and not just put down a bunch of paint where I don't actually want it because wet on wet gets a little bit tough and you need to get thicker paint on top in order to do wet on wet. And it's it gets to a point where the paint might just all start to mix and get messy and muddy. And so you gotta think a little bit. And originally I thought I would do a really colorful face, add a bunch of colors into the skin and I ended up being very boring with it. <laughs> I did get some reds in the shadows, but you don't really see it a whole lot because that's just how I would probably shade this skin tone anyway. But I did add some blue, some light blue in the highlights, but it, it was not as colorful as I originally planned, but I was just digging it. I was like, you know what? This is the way it's going. It wasn't what I originally thought, but it's the way it's going. And then for the background, I just wanted something so it wasn't all white and I just did a bunch of splotches and that's where it was really tough to not muddy up the colors. And I kept forgetting to add the stinking, not Gamvar, what's the word? Galkid. I kept forgetting to add the Galkid. And so I was adding it when I mixed and I really think I should have added it to my blobs. I was scared to do that originally, but I should have added it to the big blobs I put on my palette because I kept forgetting to add it in. But yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this in terms of just like a quick sketchbook painting. 
I like it. And stylistically, something a little different than you typically see from me. So the sketchbook is under the desk on the scanner. The cats never jump there, so it should be okay. I was just playing around with my camera because I keep forgetting to look into this until I edit and I'm like, oh my God, the audio. But lately the audio has been garbo, garbo. It's been garbo on this camera, which is interesting because it's doing this whirring noise like, or at least it was. When I first bought this camera, I actually returned it because it had that whirring noise and I couldn't get it to stop. I tried like taking off the dead cat, tried changing some audio settings, but there's really not much other than a wind noise reduction, which didn't help the whirring at all. And yeah, it was just super annoying. So I had returned that camera and then got a new one. And this one has not had that whirring noise until two or three vlogs ago. I noticed it was back, but I keep forgetting to look into it because I forget about it till I edit. And so I was fiddling with it just now and filming a bunch of test clips. And ultimately I'm vlogging with the dead cat off because at least with this camera, it seems to be better with it off. And I am indoors most of the time. I could put this on if I go outside, but like I don't really need this on inside the house. There's always gonna be some kind of background noise picked up by the camera, but that like sound seems to be gone when I take this off. So if that's been annoying you, hopefully it's better from here on out. Now it's seven o'clock. I could do more painting in the sketchbook, but I think I'm gonna keep that for tomorrow because I wanna get cooking supper. I'm gonna make some butter chicken. Not from scratch, you know me. I was watching the first season of Survivor. Actually, wait, I can bring that in the kitchen with me. I just got into Survivor last season, so season 41, and I've been watching it this season too, but I haven't seen any of the early seasons, so I'm going back. Oh yeah. <sighs> I am moist. It's now Monday, by the way. I played Step Mania, and then I sat to take a break, and I'm s my hair's still soaking wet back here. Like, <laughs> it's disgusting. Today's not supposed to be a hair wash day, but I think it's gonna have to be because, yuck. But yes, played Step Mania for the first time in like a year, maybe more than a year. I used to play Ring Fit and Step Mania most, what was it, every morning, every weekday morning? Or was it certain ones? I mean, the schedule was probably tweaked at one point, but yeah, I would stream it and get in like a little workout. And I'm like finally in the mood to get back to playing those games, but I don't know if I'm gonna stream it. So I just got in my first Step Mania session and <laughs> I'm so out of shape. I mean, I didn't need to play that to know that. I don't wanna waste any more time, so I'm not gonna do my hair, but I just got back from renewing my car insurance. I just renewed it for six months instead of a year since we're moving. I just keep pacing back and forth. <laughs> Maybe I'm just so energetic from working out. Oh wait, I wanna send some documents, hold on. I gotta send these docs and then we'll get on to the next stuff. Now, I'm just deciding if I wanna package the orders I've gotten so far, cause next post office runs tomorrow morning. I don't wanna leave them all to the morning. Or if I should do that this evening and just get cracking on the painting. I'm so energetic right now. So I'm like, hmm, maybe I should package cause I'm like moving around a little more compared to just painting. <laughs> Take advantage of this energy. Okay, and I just cut some tissue paper and folded some of these big rectangle boxes. And now I'm folding some smaller rectangles just cause I'm out of those two. I might need more of these square ones cause this is the most common size, the flat squares. But I'll just do those if I need them. I'm trying to be careful. I hate folding boxes with freshly painted nails cause the gel is durable, but it will scuff off the tip. Like it'll wear down the tip of the nail. So I'm trying to be a little more careful and therefore it's slower than usual, but it's okay. And then I can get packaging. I have 14 shipments to do. There were five that were digital download only. So those are not included in the 14. I have it set now so that if someone gets the digital downloads, it auto fulfills. So I don't have to go in and do that manually. To be honest, it's probably enough for the small ones. I'm gonna do the thing where I speed up the footage, but don't talk, cause I think it's just satisfying. It sounds nice.
orders. So I said before, I need to practice flowers in oil, especially ones with lots of overlapping petals like a rose. But I was looking through plant photos I have. I have a whole folder of plants from when we were in Hawaii. I took a bunch of pictures and I came across this one and I just, I have to draw it, okay? I cropped it to be square, but it's this little curly thingy and there are some leaves in the background and I thought I could just do like a sketchy painting of it, like something loose. I could add in some extra color to the background and make it interesting. Like maybe play up in the oranges in the background because it's very brown, so play up the oranges, really make those green leaves pop. I think that could be fun, so that's what I'll do. Now for this one, I spent twice as long as I did on the face because it does have a lot more detail in it, but I was also just getting carried away at the beginning <laughs> going a lot harder than I thought I would and spending a lot more time blending and adding details and meticulously checking my reference photo then I was like Bailey this is supposed to be loose and sketchy so go a little faster and I did pick up the pace after that but there's just so much in there it's like how can I not slow down and take time on this and you know I, I was just enjoying it so whatever I really want to focus on the main items in this, which I consider to be the purple spiral thing on the left, the green leafy plant on the right, and then there's this huge leaf or something that cuts all the way across from left to right or right to left. That was also a very interesting structure to me. And then I really liked the upper right hand corner where there is a tree trunk with little leafy things growing on it, some kind of little plant because there really wasn't a whole lot of green in this. And my goal was to make it more colorful, add oranges, add some purples where there aren't purples and add greens where there aren't any greens. And I think I was very successful in making it a little more interesting than the OG. Although I did make this a lot darker than the original reference photo, which is very interesting because technically I could take this, wait for it to dry and then go on top of some lighter colors because that's how I typically would paint something like this. Start dark, let it dry, then go a lot lighter. But it's kind of cool. It's almost like dark and mysterious, almost a little creepy. Maybe it's just nighttime. There's just something intriguing about it and it has a completely different vibe than that original reference, but I like it in a way. So I'm not going to go back in and do anything else to this, but it's just very interesting. And if I do want to do a brighter thing someday. I could incorporate these purple spirals into some kind of future artwork. But I think for this one, it's actually very cool. Didn't turn out exactly how I originally envisioned it, but I almost like this better in a way. And I just, I had a blast working on this one and simplified it a little bit in the background, obviously, but it still looks very detailed and fun. And yeah. I mean, how great is that? I just, I'm really happy with that. I had a blast with both of these oil paintings. Oh, and for the second one, I did directly blob the gal kit onto every blob of paint I took out of a tube. So there was gal kit in all of it, but I don't know if I just didn't use enough or what, because the first one I painted on Sunday, it's now Wednesday and it's still wet. And the second one I did on Monday and it's also still wet. So I just don't know. <laughs> did I not use enough gal kit? I don't know. I'm new to this stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. And next up, I'm going to take this template of mine and make a beautiful planner pad. I've got a wave border, a thick square border, or a thin one. Dainty Flowers has the thin border, but the flowers overlap the border. I placed those individually, one at a time. It took forever. <laughs> then for the video game one, it used the wavy border, but I took the washi tape design and pasted it all along here. And that made it way quicker. I did have to do cleanup in the corners though, just to make sure it tiled okay all the way around. So this one, I'm gonna go with the thick straight border and I think I'm gonna keep the entire design contained to the border. So for the which one, I'm gonna take the washi tape design again, but I've made a vertical version of it as well to go down the sides of the planner pad because otherwise the hat and flowers would be sideways. I mean, for the flowers, it wouldn't really matter. I think for the moon, the moon and the hat mostly, you'd really notice if they were turned sideways. Wouldn't be the end of the world, but I just, you know, did a vertical version so it'll look better in the end. I haven't completely covered the blue because I'm going to fill that in with solid purple because I don't want too much of the design to be cut off because this is where it's going to be cropped, but it's not exact. And so 
something like this that overhangs, that's going to be a problem. So I'm going to paste in some of these after and just like scale them, position them so that the tail end of this does stick out just so it looks good because, you know, the exact location of the crop, it varies. So I want it to look good no matter what. Okay, there we have it, I think. I'll look at it again tomorrow morning and make a final judgment call on some things. Now, little Kiki's been hollering at the door. I could hear the doorknob going like this. Yeah, I heard that a couple times. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> Is it time for treats? Yes. I've made supper. Bacon wrapped pesto chicken. Some rice and broccoli. I was hoping to get the bacon a little crispier, but I didn't want to cook it too long and the oven was not broiling, so. There we go. It's very juicy, delicious. I could not finish it, so a big chunk of my chicken's in the fridge. <laughs> Cause those chicken breasts were huge. <sighs> yeah, that was a late supper. It's past nine now. So I'm just gonna chill for the rest of the evening and I'm ending the vlog here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.